What's up guys, this is Enigma here back with the 10th episode of Client Coding Tutorials. This episode will be about steel and stored buttons for chests. It works with large chests, locked chests, um, trapped chests rather. Um, so yeah, it's not specific to the one kind of chest. And I'm pretty sure it's ender chest as well. Well, probably not ender chest, but you can do it for ender chest, it's the exact same thing, pretty much, so. Yeah, if you want to know how to do it, then mess around with it yourself, and. Yeah. But it's not actually block, that is actually GUI. GUI. Chest. I'm pretty sure it works with ender chest as well, though, I'm not sure, I've not actually tried that. What we first need to do, we need to do public void init GUI and this basically is going to override the current GUI so that we can add buttons to it. Um, and in there we need to put, we need to use the super dot init GUI and that basically overrides the thing as I said. See, it overrides that. So that means we can add the buttons. Um, next we're going to um, define our position of the buttons, like in the Y position. And because we're going to refer to the same thing twice, it's better just to like code it out once. Um, but of course you can just basically put it in twice if you like. But we're going to do height minus Y size. So that would be the size of the button. Um, uh, rather the the height of the GUI screen. Was that right? Yeah, um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Divided by two plus two. And I'll show you why in a minute. I mean, these buttons aren't the most great looking things, but they work really well. So. Um, now we can actually add our button, so this dot button list dot add new GUI button and this takes it takes X position no it takes the ID X Y um width height and the name of the button so that's six arguments. First one is our button ID so it should be one. Second one is our position, which is width divided by 2 minus 5, and that will be, um, that will be kind of about 80 pixels from the right hand side of the chest GUI. I don't really know how to explain it much better than that. Next is pause Y. Because we already defined it, because we're using the same Y position for the buttons, so, we don't, so it's better just to write this out once. It saves time. Um, then we need to do our width, which is 40, 40, and then height, which is 14. And then finally, the string of the button, which will be first one, it's got to be steel. And now we can basically copy this. So I copy that, except it's going to be width minus 2 plus 40. And then instead of steel, it would be store. And instead of 1, it would be 2. Mm. Then we actually, now we need to do our protected void. Protected void action performed GUI button par1 you can call par1 anything by the way it doesn't matter but just make sure you refer to the same thing when you're actually doing your check of the ID and then we're just going to do if par1.id so if the button ID is equal to 1, so if it's the steal button that you press, then it's going to start stealing. 
and we're going to do a try catch statement so it doesn't crash your game and the try statement you just got to do for int x is equal to zero to x is lower than lower chest inventory dot get size inventory x plus plus basically what that does is it is it um gets gets the size of the chest and basically it's gonna start shift clicking it's gonna start shift clicking the all the components of the chest into your thing. We don't actually need um we don't actually need to put like the squiggly brackets here because it's only one function but you can put them in if you want it doesn't make a difference. Um MC dot Oh, not the player, player controller dot window click. Um, so this is basically the the function for like clicking out in the windows in the GUI. So par one is equal to the window ID, um, which is inventory slots dot window ID. Par two is equal to x, which is the um, slot that it's clicking in. Um, we're going to go over these next parameters, but it's zero and one. Um, and the last parameter is mc dot the player, because it's that's what's um, that's what it's transferring into, or that's what's like interacting basically. And then we need to do a catch statement. So just put in catch and parentheses type in exceptional capital E. Um now you can leave these empty, that's optional. But just to make it look fancy, I'm just gonna do E dot print stack trace. Um you don't really have to know. Right, so that's That's that basically we can copy this. We can paste it, except we're gonna change a few things, we're gonna change it to ID2 instead of lower chest inventory. It's gonna be inventory oh, why did I put that capital I? Inventory slots dot inventory slots dot size Let's just get rid of this dot get size inventory. And the reason we define inventory slots twice is because it's a multi dimensional array. And and that means it's like it's got instead of like just a normal array with like two rows, it's like that. So there's like two different index values it can have. The first one is the item slot and the second one is the count. So that's why we have to put an inventory slots to inventory slots dot size. Um and that's you. Basically you're done. So here's what it looks like and here's what it does. Now I'm quite pleased that I've got this in under ten minutes. So I've already got stuff in my inventory. Um, if you just throw some more stuff down. Just get some random stuff. Pick it up. Right. Um, here's the buttons. Um, you can mess around with the positions, but um, first of all, steal. It will steal a steal anything in the chest if there's anything in it and store puts as much of your items as it can into the chest let's make it a big chest um, so it'll store, it'll store everything and steal, steal everything, store, blah 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 get the point, I want to see if this works with ender chests, I'm pretty sure it does although I'm not 100% sure because chests, ender chests basically have the same kind of thing yeah so you can also do it with ender chests 
And yeah, that pretty much concludes it for this tutorial. Um, if you've enjoyed it, please leave a rating, um, thumbs up preferably, <laughs> and a comment, give me some feedback, give me some ideas on what else I could do in these client code tutorials. Next episode will be um, some other things, maybe drop, maybe a magnet mode kind of thing that sucks in items around you. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.